now we are going to see the two sample confidence intervals using python and the first one over here would be the two sample pooled t interval so let me just mention that two sample pooled t interval so in this case if you can recall we have a random sample coming from normal distribution with parameters mu1 and sigma square and there is another sample which is say y1 y2 ym which is also coming from your normal distribution with mean mu2 and same variance that is sigma square so in this case we have the common variance between the two populations so let us see how do we work with this so first of all as we usually do we will import numpy as np okay we know that this is used for your numerical operations and then from scipy.stats scipy.stats we will going to import t because we are going to work with the t distribution okay now let us set the random seed np dot random seed so you must have seen that this line basically we have been using it when we started working with the, your random samples right because we do not want the sample to be updated every time we run this code in order to ensure that we have given this value over here you can give any non negative number over here so let us see what are the true population parameters true population parameters so in this case my true the first mu1 let it be 35 and true mu2 be 30 so mu1 and mu2 is given to us and the common variance that is true sigma squared we are writing because sq suppose squared is 25 this is the common unknown variance after this we will also mention about the sample size so first let the size of the first sample be 40 and for the other one let us denote by m let it be 30 so these are the sample sizes now we are ready to generate a random sample for the two populations so generate a random sample in this case we are going to define a variable data sample one as np dot random dot normal because we have to draw a random sample from your normal distribution okay so here it means that it is going to use your numpy libraries this function and we are going to draw a sample from normal distribution whose mu and sigma square is already defined so i can mention that so true mu1 and variance would be because here we have used variance so i can take the square root of np square root of true true underscore sigma underscore sq and finally the size of the sample would be n okay so it will draw a sample of size 40 from normal distribution with mean 35 and variance 25 or you can say standard deviation 5 similarly i need to draw a sample from the second population also so let me use data sample 2 for this so i can use the same command so np dot random so here it would be 2 since variance is same so this would remain the same over here the sample size would be different in this case now we will set the confidence level so conf level let that be 0.95 
okay and alpha will be basically 1 minus of confidence level so 1 minus conf level and we need the degrees of freedom so let that be df be n plus m minus 2 right because if you can recall from the result that we discussed in the previous lecture so in that we had the degrees of freedom would be n plus m minus 2 because it is following t distribution and the critical value for t critical would be found using this person point function which we have defined earlier also 1 minus alpha by 2 and so let me not use df over here because it is going to create let me use dof degree of freedom so here df would be dof now we will calculate the sample statistics so basically in this step what we have done is that we have first defined the confidence level and we have set it to 95 percent and alpha will be one minus of confidence level which is alpha is the significance level right so it is basically representing the probability of making your type 1 error degree of freedom is n plus m minus 2 because it is a two sample t test and t critical we have found out using this is basically the critical t value based on the confidence level and the degrees of freedom and we will use this to determine your margin of error for the confidence interval so we will calculate the sample statistics now so mean 1 would be calculated using np dot mean and here we would write the for the first sample it will calculate and in mean 2 we would store the mean for the second one data underscore sample 2 okay similarly sd1 also can be calculated that is standard deviation for this again we will use numpy's std function so here again we would write data underscore sample 1 and here we will also specify that it is calculating the sample variance and not the population variance by specifying this ddof as 1 and standard deviation 2 would be here again so here we will use 2 now you are ready to calculate your pooled standard error calculate the pooled standard error pooled std only i would write so here we will write np dot sqrt basically we are looking at square root so if you can recall it is basically in the numerator we have n minus 1 times sample variance of the first one plus m minus 1 times sample variance of the second one and the whole in the denominator we have n plus m minus 2 and if I take the square root of that, that will be your S suffix p. That is the pooled standard deviation or pooled standard error. np dot square root. So here I need to first write the numerator. So it is n minus 1 times st, sorry, sd1. We have used this notation. sd1 plus m minus 1 times sd2. And this whole is divided by the degrees of freedom that is d o f that is n plus m minus 2 so here there would be one more bracket okay after this we can find out the margin of error For margin of error, we can just write MOE. So T critical into we multiply it with the pooled one that is pooled SD, pooled SD, and then we multiply it with 1 over N plus 1 over M square root of that thing. So we will write N 
sorry n p dot s q r t one over n plus one over m right because if in this case two sample pool t interval the confidence interval came out as sample mean x bar minus y bar plus minus t alpha by 2 that is t critical at n plus m minus 2 degrees of freedom and then we multiplied it with this pool standard deviation into sp into square root of 1 over n plus 1 over m so pooled sorry it is pooled std not sd now since you have calculated the margin of error now you are ready to find out the confidence interval calculate the confidence interval for difference of means when you are looking at difference of mean so first of all let us write difference mean basically it would be mean 1 minus mean 2 okay because that we have already defined and your ci would now be basically the difference of mean that is difference x bar minus y, y bar minus the margin of error okay moe and same thing x bar minus y bar difference mean plus margin of error finally we can print these so we can give the command print we can again use this f string true mean for one we have written so that is your true mu true mu one again same thing would be for your second one true mu 2 would be there and if you want to see what is the sample mean for the first one so that we have calculated sample sample 1 mean we can write sample 1 mean so sample 1 mean we calculated as mean 1 okay mean 1 and if i calculate write sample mean of the second one also so that would be sample 2 mean so here it would be mean 2 and finally we will have the confidence interval so print ci for basically for pool t interval or you can write for difference of means So this one would be your ci so what you can see from here is that your mu1 was 35 mu2 was 30 sample mean came out as 34.5 and for the second sample it came out as 31.5 approximately and the confidence interval we have obtained is 1.93 24.24 so this is for mu1 minus mu2 okay so the difference of the population mean so we are 95 percent confident that it is going to lie in this interval so this code basically conducts a two sample pool t test to estimate and create a confidence interval for difference between two population means okay you note that here since we are using dot ppf this percent point function that is why we have used 1 minus alpha by 2 rather in the results in theory part if you would see it is alpha by 2 t alpha by 2 n plus m minus 2 basically both of them give the same answer because it is the way that this function is defined in your python in like the library scipy so that is why we are writing it 1 minus alpha by 2 so basically this would tell and find out the t value that corresponds to the right tail probability of 1 minus alpha by 2 so it is the same thing basically so don't get confused with this ppf function so now we move on to 
the next step that is your Wells T interval. So let me mention that as a comment. So Wells T interval in this case, how is it different from the previous one that is the pooled one? Here the variances would also be different. Population means as well as the variance will be different and in the pooled one the variances are same. That is why we kept it as 25. So here we are going to take it as different. So although we have imported these libraries, I can just rerun, restart and run all so that it gets updated. Okay, so we don't since we have already imported the libraries numpy and scipy from scipy.stats, we have imported t and uh, we can keep it as it is. So np.randomc, let me ensure this also. So let me just write this. Now we will write the true population parameters. So true, let me, true population parameters would be true mu1 that would be suppose 35, true mu2 let that be 30 as we have defined earlier also. Now your true sigma underscore sq1 so sigma square that is first variance let that be 25 and the other one let that be 36 okay so here we are taking different variances as opposed to the previous one now we can also write the sample sizes so sample sizes as we have taken earlier also n40 and ms30 okay so these were the same things that we have defined earlier. Now we are going to generate the sample from normal distribution, generate a random sample. So data dot sample one np dot random dot normal. So here it is the step is same with just the difference that here we would have to give the different variances for both the samples. So np.sqrt so here again we would write true sigma sq1 and here we would specify the sample size that is n and for the second one. So here it would be NP2 and here it would be Sigma2 and finally M sizes, sample size is M. We would now calculate the means or you can say the sample statistics. Calculate the sample statistic. We can also directly copy this because it is the same command that we have over here. So mean would mean one, mean two would be same, SD1 and SD2. Yeah, so this basically all this entire step would be the same. Okay. Now, if you remember in Wells T interval, the degrees of freedom for Wells is a bit complicated and it will have a numerator that is was denoted by R. We had some term in the numerator and then in the denominator. So let me just write those things. Calculate the degrees of freedom for Wells T interval. So numerator let me mention num. So if it is basically sample variance of first one that is sx square over n plus sy square over n m that is its sample size and whole digital power 2. So let us write that sd1 so sd1 so because here we have considered uh, the square root so it would be raised to the power 2 divided by n plus sd2 divided by m 
whole raised to the power 2 and similarly denominator would be in that case it is sx square over n whole square divided by n minus 1 plus sy square over m whole square divided by n minus 1. So, the denominator in this case would be sd1 sx square divided by n again this it would be raised to the power 2 and this whole would be again divided by n minus 1 and similarly another term would come over here so it would be sd2 sy square divided by m whole square divided by m minus 1. So, the degrees of freedom that is DOF in this case would be numerator divided by denominator. So, this is basically your R. Now, we are ready to set the confidence level. So, we can use the previous steps that we have defined. Set the confidence level and the critical values and all those things. So, the confidence level is again 0.95 alpha is 1 minus confidence level degree of freedom we have already calculated above because here it is not same as n plus m minus 2 but rather it is defined in this input line 14 over here and the t critical again we will use this it would be dof right that, that is same okay now let us calculate the margin of error So, the margin of error here it would be squared, first we will calculate the square of this squared SD, it would be SD square SD1 square. SD square divided by 2 SD1 square divided by sorry divided by N plus the second variance sy square that is sd2 raised to the power 2 divided by m. Now, margin of error in this case would be t critical that we have obtained okay, into p dot sqrt of this squared sd because it is under root of sx square over n plus sy square over m right so you have t critical evaluated at these degrees of freedom and you are multiplying it with sx square over n plus sy square over. so this is the margin of error and finally you can substitute it for calculating the difference of means or the confidence interval so if you want we can just use it from here probably we can use both of them Right. So, we will write the difference of means. So, difference of means would be x bar minus y bar and confidence interval in this case would be difference of means minus MOE the same thing. Okay. Finally, we can print all these and let us see. So, let us see what is mean 1. If you see what is mean 1, mean 1 was 34.5, mean 2 was 31.79. Mu1, mu2, if you remember, it is 35 and 30, right? 35 and 30. Now, what do we need? We need the confidence interval. So, let us see what is the updated confidence interval. You can see that it goes from minus 0 0.273 to 5.85 because we have different variances in this case. So, the confidence interval also gets modified in the same way. So, this is basically your 95 percent confidence interval which means that we are 95 percent confident that the difference of the population mean is going to lie between these two. So, the third case for your confidence interval in case of two problems it was the P or T interval. So, let us see what do we do in this case. If you remember there we had since it is a paired sample. So, we will have D bar plus minus t alpha by 2 n minus 1 into sd divided by square root of n right. 
So we have already have the necessary libraries. So let us just write the sample data. So we are just taking this. So data one, let me data one is the before one or maybe write I can write data B before only I would write. So let this be basically an array. So it would contain suppose 45, 50, 48, 55, 42, 47, 53, 52, 49 and 46. Okay, So these are some random values that we have taken. So basically here we are defining these measurements, so data before. So here it has 3, 6, 7, 9, 10 observations, 45, 50, 48, 55, 42, 47, 53, 52, 49, 46. Likewise, I can define what is the data afterwards. So in this case, it can be suppose 38, 42, 40, 48, 35, 41, 45, 40, 39, 37. Okay. Now we can calculate the differences. So differences would be np dot array. So numpy's array. So basically, this it is converting the list that we have defined over here into a numpy array. So this numpy and np dot array. So we will write data before it is taking the difference between this and np dot array data underscore after. So basically, it is doing element wise subtraction of these two arrays and then it is storing it in this differences array. Okay. Now let us see what is the length. Length is we know that length of these differences this is going to be 10 only. So let me just see what is n, n is 10. Now we can calculate the sample statistic. So the mean difference that is d bar it would be np dot mean of these differences that we have calculated and std standard deviation difference this would be np dot std differences that is difference that we have calculated at ddof that is the sample variance okay so we are calculating sd sample standard deviation over here again we can set the confidence level and other things so it would be confidence level is 0.95 alpha is this and here again we have the same things so remember that what I told you about the percent point function. So if you write, if you in the theory part, if you have alpha by two, so in code when you are writing in Python, so it would be one minus of alpha by two because of the way the this function is defined in this library. Okay. Now if we have to calculate the margin of error. So margin of error would be MOE. Margin of error in this case would be T critical, which is T alpha by 2 n minus 1 into SD. So SD is STD difference that we have obtained. So let me just write STD difference divided by square root of n. So we will write NP dot square root of n. Sorry, it should not be MP, it should be MO. And finally, you can write the confidence interval. Margin of error is there. So your CI 
would be mean difference that is d bar mean difference minus your margin of error and mean difference plus margin of error. So let us see what is your confidence interval in this case. It is 5.13 to 11.26. And what is the difference between the sample mean? Let me also see what is mean difference. If you want to give a proper print command, that also you can do. It is 8.2. Sample mean difference is 8.2 and the confidence interval comes out as this from 5.13 to 11.26. So we have basically written this code for determining if there is a significant difference between the paired measurements and we have constructed a confidence interval to estimate the magnitude of that difference. So this basically completes for your t interval. Whenever you are interested in mu basically for the difference of means, we have these three tests. First one was the pooled one, pooled interval where you have variances same in Welsh interval. So variances become different and finally you have paired t interval where the measurements are dependent. Now we are going to look at the confidence interval for ratio of two population variances. Confidence interval for ratio of two population variances. Okay, sigma 1 square over sigma 2 square. So in this case, we need to import numpy. So let us rewrite it. And we also need from scipy dot stats import f. We need f distribution in this case because we are dealing with the ratio of two chi squares. So if you can recall, we have studied this earlier in sampling distribution and in other places as well. So it is we need this to calculate the critical f values. Now again, we will set the random seed np dot random dot seed suppose 123. So basically by setting the random seeds, you ensure that the random samples generated are reproducible. Now we will write the true mu 1 mu 2 sigma 1 square and sigma 2 square. So we can probably take the same values that we have defined earlier. So suppose we are taking this same thing two population parameters. So let me just use this same setup here. So true mu 1 35 30 25 36 40 and 30 right. Now we will generate random samples. You can see that the first few commands are same generate random sample. So basically these are the codes when you already have the data and you have uh, the variance and the mean you know what is happening there. In that case you can opt for these steps and find out the confidence interval. Okay, So here so data sample 1 let me write it again. So again it would be from np sorry np dot random so we are generating a random sample from normal distribution with mean true mu 1 variance that is np dot square root we can write so that would be the standard deviation that would be true sigma underscore sd1 and finally the sample size would be n likewise you would just copy it and here it would be true mu 2 sd2 for the second sample and the second sample the size is for m okay now we are ready to calculate the sample variances okay so true sigma sorry sq square okay let me just write sq over here it should not be okay now we will calculate the sample statistic in this case it would be the sample variance right because we are dealing with the ratio of two population variance as opposed to the previous uh, codes where we were dealing with the sample means so here we will write sample variance one sample var one to find out the variance 
of the data sample first one that is data sample one and we would write DDOF as one in order to ensure that we are dealing with sample variance. Likewise, we can rewrite it and see that it would be sample variance two for the second sample in this. So here we are using np.var function from numpy library in order to calculate the sample variances. And we know that DDOFM is 1. Basically, it specifies the Bessel's correction in order to get the unbiased sample variance. That is 1 over n minus 1 should be in the denominator. n minus 1 should be in the denominator. Now, we set the confidence level. So, confidence level, we have been taking it as confidence level. Let me just write it. So, conf level would be 0.95 and alpha let that be. So, alpha in this case would be 1 minus of conf level. Now, we will calculate the critical values. Critical values. So, here in ratio of population variances, we use C and D notations. C is used for first one. So, f dot pp f percent point function. In this case, to calculate the percentile from your f distribution, basically it is the inverse CDF, right? So, it would be alpha by 2 in this case, m minus 1, n minus 1, and what will be d? Note that is, is again the reverse of what you have in your slides because it is alpha by 2 and 1 minus alpha by 2 are switched m minus 1 n minus 1 c also if you can recall from the theory it is f at 1 minus alpha by 2 m minus 1 n minus 1 or you can say 1 over f alpha by 2 n minus 1 m minus 1 and d is this So, you have, you, these lines will calculate the critical F values, C in this case it will calculate for C and this one will calculate the critical value D for the upper bound of the confidence interval. Okay? Now, we will use these critical values to construct the confidence interval for ratio of two variances. So, let me write that as lower bound suppose lower bound would be because if you recall, it would be C times sample variance 1 divided by sample variance 2, S1 square over S2 square. So, a sample underscore var 1 divided by sample underscore var 2. Similarly, upper bound would be D times sample variance 1 and divided by sample variance 2. Okay, so if you want to see the confidence interval for this, we can see what is the lower bound for this 0.38 and the upper bound over here is 1.55. Okay, so if you want to be so, let me just write few commands for print so that it is easier for you to understand. So, sample variance 1 would be your sample underscore var 1. Okay. And the second one would be same thing we can for the second sample, second sample variance, sample var 2. And now we can also print your confidence interval in this case, confidence interval for ratio of population variance that is sigma square, sigma 1 square over sigma 2 square. So, here it would be the lower bound confidence interval would be in this form. So, first we will have the lower bound. and then we will have the upper bound. So, sample variance was 34.87, 44.0. So, the initial one 
the original one is 25 and 36 so you can see that sample variance is 34 and 44 in this case and this is basically your confidence interval for ratio of the two population variances so finally we move on to the confidence interval for difference of two population parameters difference of two population proportions so let us import numpy as np and from scipy dot stats import norm because in this case you can recall that we use normal distribution right when we are talking about proportion because binomial can be approximated using the normal distribution so in this case let us first see what are the sample sizes so let the first population size sample size be 300 and 1 and n to be 400 let me take p1 hat as 0.6 that is the sample proportion for the first population and p2 hat basically would be point suppose 0.55 okay this is the sample proportion corresponding to the second one let us take the confidence level as 0.95 and alpha as 1 minus of this confidence level now the critical value in this case z critical would be norm dot ppf and here we would write 1 minus alpha by 2 right so we are using this scipy's module norm function over here norm mod from norm module we are using this function norm dot ppf which calculates a percent point function or you can say the inverse cdf for the standard normal distribution with mean 0 and variance this so basically in other words it will tell you the z value for the given cumulative probability and z critical is there you can also calculate the margin of error now so margin of error if you can recall it would be z alpha by 2 we write and under square root of p1 hat 1 minus p1 hat divided by this first sample size plus p2 hat into 1 minus p2 hat divided by the second one okay so let me just mention that z critical into np dot sqrt it would be p1 hat p1 hat into 1 minus p1 underscore hat this whole would be divided by n1 plus p2 underscore hat into 1 minus p2 underscore hat p2 hat okay divided by so here should be multiple p2 into 1 p2 hat into 1 minus p2 hat whole divided by the second sample size now you will have the difference of proportions different prop would be p1 hat minus p2 hat and your ci that is the confidence interval would be difference proportion minus your margin of error and difference proportion plus margin of error so let us see what is the first p1 hat p1 hat p2 hat we already have right 0 0.6 and 0.55 and then we write the confidence interval so let us see what is the confidence interval in this case it is from minus 0 0.02 to 0 0.12 so this basically tells you that it, we are 95 percent confident that the difference of the two population proportions would fall between these two endpoints so this is how you can calculate the confidence interval 
for a given data set and for the given values at certain confidence level. So obviously you can change the confidence level according to your problem and these things, these steps you can keep on defining and you will get the answer.